For the first time in 50 years, NASA are going back to the moon, and this time, they're planning to stay there for good. Even before Neil Armstrong said those famous words, humans have been dreaming about what a lunar base might look like. Visions of these massive domes have inspired generations of scientists and resulted in the successful moon landings of the 60s and 70s. But then, everything stopped. There were no more missions to the moon for more than 50 years. Now in 2022, we are ready to go back with the Artemis missions. And let me just say that what NASA has planned for the next eight years is completely unbelievable. The most powerful rocket ever created. A lunar gateway that will act as a spaceport for incoming travelers. I mean, a literal space taxi that will take people down onto the lunar surface. And finally, the Artemis Base Camp, our permanent home on the moon. I don't think you're quite grasping truly how ridiculous this is. I mean, every single human in human history has looked to the moon and dreamed of what it might be like up there. And within this decade, humans will be living there just like it's another country on Earth. This is gonna be insane. These plans are ambitious to say the least, and NASA have a ton of hurdles that they need to get over if they want to make it on schedule. The Artemis program can be broken down into three main problems. The spacecraft, the gateway, and the moon base. For the spacecraft, the question is, how can we get people to the moon and back home safely and hopefully not have it cost an unreasonable amount of money? And well, there are two main components to this system. The SLS rocket, which is this big orange rocket that you see at the bottom, and the Orion spacecraft. The SLS rocket is the most powerful rocket ever made. This thing is huge, being nearly 100 meters tall and weighing over 2,600 tons when fully fueled. This beast of a rocket will take the Orion spacecraft further than anything that's been built for humans has ever traveled before. Lucky for us, the SLS rocket is already made and is preparing for its first launch on November 16th, 2022. As for Orion, this is literally the spacecraft of the future. We've never designed something this capable to take humans farther than they've ever gone before. NASA are planning to use Orion as our ship to the moon and eventually Mars. The big pointy section at the top is the launch abort system. It is designed to propel Orion to safety away from the rocket if it were to explode. The crew module is capable of taking four astronauts with it to the moon and beyond. So we know about the spacecraft, but then it begs the question, how are they gonna be able to land on the moon and leave again safely? Well, this is where the Gateway program comes in. Gateway will be humanity's first space station orbiting the moon. It will act similar to the ISS, allowing rockets from various countries to come and dock at the station to drop off crew. Similar to the ISS, some astronauts will live and work aboard the Gateway ship, but for the most part, it will act as a stepping stone to get people down onto the moon. NASA have partnered with SpaceX and a number of other companies to make sure that this thing gets built on time. Well, now the astronauts are on board the Gateway ship. So what happens next? That's where the human landing systems come into play. This will be the final step in getting humans onto the lunar surface. NASA are working on creating essentially a space taxi to leave the gateway and drop people off on the moon before heading back up. So now they're on the moon, but where are they gonna stay? I guess it's time to build a moon base, and this is where things get super futuristic. Over the coming decade, they will begin to piece together a moon base that is capable of sustaining humans permanently on the lunar surface. NASA have said that this base camp will feature a futuristic lunar cabin a rover for the astronauts to drive around on the surface, and even a mobile home. The Apollo missions in the 60s and 70s all chose to land around the equator of the moon, but the moon base will actually be built at the lunar south pole. We have never been there before, so it's gonna be tricky, but the south pole is simply an ideal location for the moon base. This is largely because water is so crucial to human life and the South Pole region is covered in ice that we can use to survive. There are also regions at the South Pole that receive near constant light from the sun, which make it a perfect place to set up a solar farm to power the moon base. 
Much of this experience creating a moon base will act sort of like a test run for when we look to do the same thing on Mars. It's really important that we start to build these systems that allow for astronauts to be self-sufficient really far away from home. There's still so much that we don't understand about how the human body might react to prolonged spaceflight. Radiation and lack of gravity have been shown to be pretty tough on the human body. So how will the body react to a trip of this scale? That is what the Artemis missions are all about. Just like how the Apollo missions happened over a number of years, the Artemis missions will follow a similar path. Artemis 1 will launch on November 16th, 2022, and this will be an unmanned mission to test the SLS rocket and the Orion spacecraft. It will fly all the way out to the moon and come back to Earth before landing in the Pacific Ocean. This mission will last a total of 25 days. As long as everything goes well with Artemis 1, Artemis 2 is set for launch in 2024. This mission will be a repeat of Artemis 1, but this time with a crew on board. They will fly to the moon and orbit before coming home. Then finally, one year later, in 2025, Artemis 3 will take humans back to land on the moon for the first time since 1972. If everything goes well with Artemis 3, then they will begin to send missions to the moon every single year to continue research and building the moon base. All right, so now we know what they're planning to do, but there's one question that I still haven't answered for you. Who cares? Why are they doing all of this? I mean, we already went to the moon 50 years ago and it looked pretty boring there anyway. I think it's pretty easy to think that we've already done everything there is to do on the moon, but in reality, I think we've only just begun to scratch the surface. With the journey to the South Pole being a focus, we are going to learn so much about the evolution of the moon and the Earth's history as a result. So for NASA, it's really about fully exploring the moon and discovering all of the knowledge that it holds. They've also said that there will be significant economic benefits to traveling back to the moon. But something I think can't go understated is what these missions do to inspire the next generation. I mean, we've already seen this with the Apollo generation. These kids were able to watch the first humans go to the moon and were able to realize that humans are capable of some truly amazing things. And with the Artemis missions aiming to put the first woman and the first person of color on the moon, now even more people get to experience those same feelings of inspiration. The world we live in today can often feel so divisive with wars and climate change and politics causing so many issues for so many people around the world, it's probably a good time to have something that could bring humanity together. And we've seen how this kind of event can change our perspective before. More than 50 years ago, three humans were launched into space to visit the moon for the first time ever. They began orbiting the moon on Christmas Eve, 1968. And as they came around from the dark side of the moon, one of the astronauts snapped what is now one of the most important images ever taken. I'm of course talking about the famous Earthrise image. This single photo of our beautiful blue planet is often credited with launching the environmental movement, inspiring millions into action to protect what is most important to us. The astronaut who snapped this picture said one of the most profoundly beautiful things I've ever heard, saying, we set out to explore the moon and instead discovered the Earth. Beyond inspiration, these missions really mark our first step as humanity towards leaving Earth. Over the next decade, there'll be humans just like you and me who are no longer on the Earth at all times for the rest of however long humans exist. I mean, this is genuinely one of the most unbelievable human endeavors ever undertaken and will be remembered for thousands of years into the future. People thousands of years from now will look back on this decade as the years that humanity left the earth and begun living among the stars, and you were alive to witness it with your own two eyes.